So in the last lecture, you learned about stack layout. We use stack layout to position elements in a single line, vertically or horizontally. Another layout we have in Xamarin Forms is grid, which we use to position elements in rows and columns. Real world examples of grids are in keypads, calculators, calendars, metro style designs that we see in Windows 8 or higher, photo albums, and so on. So let's see how we can use a grid. So here in Xamarin Studio, I'm going to create a new XAML page. Grid page. And then in the app class, I'm going to set the main page to grid page. Now back here in our XAML page, first I'm going to add a padding, 0, 20, 0, 0. Remove the content and instead add a grid element. Inside this grid, I'm going to lay out four labels in two rows and two columns. So label, label one, and I'm going to set a background color here so you can see clearly silver. I copy a few times. So we have four labels. Now we need to put each label in a particular row and column in the grid. And for this, we use a special syntax, grid.row, and we set this to a value. So the first row is zero, and this is the default value. So I could ignore it, but I'm going to write it for clarity. Now, similarly, grid.column, set this to zero, so the first column. Now, what I want you to pay attention to here is that the row and column properties do not belong to the label class. So if you go to the code behind and declare a label here and type l.row or l.column, look, we don't have such properties. These properties are what we call attached bindable properties, which means they are defined by the grid class, but they can be set by other classes. And with this technique, we can put any elements here and assign them a row and a column in the grid. Later, when I show you how we implement this in the code, you will have better understanding of this implementation. So for now, just remember this syntax, grid.row and grid.column. Now I'm going to assign the other labels to different rows and columns in our grid. All right, here is the result. So two rows and two columns. Now before running the application, I'm going to set the background color of the grid to yellow so you can see clearly. Let's look at the result. Okay, the first thing I want you to note here is that similar to the stack layout, grid stretches to fill its container. So it's taking the entire page. Also, each of our labels are stretched to fill the containing row and column. Now you see a yellow line that separates rows and columns. This is because of the spacing between rows and columns in the grid, which we can configure. So back here, I can set row spacing of the grid to, let's say, 40, 40 units. Or column spacing of the grid to 40. Let's look at the result. And this is what we get. So if you don't want to have any spacing between rows and columns, you simply set those properties to zero. Now let me show you something else about the grid. I'm going to add another label in the third row, but I want this label to take three columns. So I add a label here, assign it to the third row. But instead of setting grid.column, I'm going to set grid.column span. I want this label to take three columns. Let's set the text to column span and background to silver. Let's look at the result. Okay, this is what I was talking about. So we have a label in the third row that is taking three columns. In the real world, you have probably seen this in photo galleries. So we have a bunch of thumbnails. They all are small, but some of the thumbnails stand out. They're bigger. They may take multiple rows and columns. Let's look at another example. Now I want to add a label to the third column that takes three rows. So label, 
This time I'm going to assign this to the third column. And I want this to take three rows. So I use grid that row span. Set the text to row span and background to silver. And here's the result. So this is our new label that is taking one column and three rows. Now let's talk about the size of columns and rows. So currently you see all columns have the same width or all rows have the same height. What if you want to have more control over the width of the columns or height of the rows? Well, inside the grid element, we need to set grid.row definitions. So grid.row definitions. Just to refresh your memory, I'm using property element syntax here. So we are using an XML element to set a property of the grid, row definitions property. This property is a collection type. It's a complex type. So we cannot set it using an attribute. That's why we use property element syntax. Now inside this collection, I'm going to add multiple elements. Row definition element. For each row, we specify a height. Now this height can be an absolute value or proportional. For example, for the first row, I want its height to be 100 units. Again, I'm going to talk about these units in the future, but for now, don't worry about it. Again, I'm going to repeat this line three times because we have three rows. Now, for the second and third rows, I want to use proportional values. So, the first row is going to be 100 units tall, and I want the remaining space to be divided equally between the second and third rows. So we use a star. Or if you want the height of the second row to be twice the height of the third row, you can make it two star. So one more time, the first row is going to be 100 units tall and the remaining space will be divided such that the second row is twice as tall as the third row. Let's look at the result. All right, look, the first row is 100 units tall. And the second row is twice taller than the third row. Now, if you want to have more control over the width of the columns, you can use a similar technique. So back here, again, we use property element syntax to set grid.column definitions property. And here, depending on the number of columns we have, we add multiple column definition elements. And for each column, we specify a width. Let's say we want the first column to be 100 units wide. And let's duplicate this. And we want the second column to be twice as wide as the third column. Let's look at the result. So the first column is 100 units wide. And the second column is twice as wide as the third column. Now, the last thing before we finish this lecture, look at the first column. This label we have here, there is some padding on the right side of the label. And that's because 100 units is a little bit too much for a short label. Back here, I want to set the width of the first column to auto. And that means this column will be wide enough to fit all its children. Let's look at the result. Look, the padding on the right side of the label is gone because now our first column is wide enough to fit all its children. So let's quickly recap. With grid, we can lay out multiple elements in rows and columns. If you want all your rows and columns to be the same size, you can simply add your elements inside the grid and assign them to a row and column in the grid. If you want to have more control over the height of rows, you can use property element syntax to set the row definitions property of the grid. And similarly, if you want to have control over the width of the columns, you use property element syntax to set column definitions property. Next, I'm going to show you how to work with grids in code behind.